on now. What's up? Can you, can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I, can, uh, I don't see you, though. Do you see me now? Yeah, yeah. All right, perfect. Uh, how are things there with the uh, quarantine and everything going on? I mean, it sucks. All the classes are canceled. Um, you know, nothing's really going on. Uh, a lot of people left the gym. You know, I, I still live in the dorm at the gym, so we've just been working. Uh, I've been trying to get privates in when I can, going for runs, uh, hiking and stuff, just little stuff to get out every now and then. But for the most part, you know, sitting inside in my room 10 to 12 hours a day is not fun. Are you in uh, you in Albuquerque or back home in Houston? Uh, Albuquerque. Yeah, okay. Uh Man, yeah, no, same same sort of boat here. Like we're all locked in. Nothing we we can get fined for being out. So uh it's kind of stuck at home. Um not an MMA fighter, so I guess it's not as bad, but uh <laughs> still uh still sucks. Um uh, first things first, man, congrats on uh signing with Aries. Oh yeah. What uh what what was the uh what was the decision? What was the reasoning behind that decision? You know, obviously there's other organizations like Bellator Right. LFA. Well, um, uh, Bellator never called. Uh, they never offered. Um, you know, one never offered. PFL never offered. None of that happened. Uh, what What happened is, um, you know, I tweeted that I got released, and then an hour later, Aries came through with an offer. And um, you know, the the way it works is, you know, your intro contract to the UFC is is typically like ten thousand to show, ten thousand to win. And then uh, you win, and it goes up each time. So um, me coming off of three losses, like a, a lot of places weren't really looking for anything. Uh, a lot of local shows had asked, um, but I knew if I went back to fighting on the local show, I was going to have to probably, you know, go back to working full time again as well. Um, well, Aries, you know, they came out with an offer that was, you know, just too good to refuse. It's, uh, I'm actually making uh, a little bit more than I was with the UFC. Uh, I'll be able to travel more. It's a younger organization as well. And that just fits really well for me in, in terms of building a brand and, and doing things like that. We can both benefit each other. I've got a big following right now, um, so they can benefit from that. I can benefit from as a, as they grow as a company and me being one of their fighters, it will help grow me and they'll be able to feature me more. And I can start doing things that, you know, I probably wasn't going to get the chance to do with the UFC because I'm not an established star in that organization. Um, and I didn't establish myself as a star in that organization. So here I get a chance to still fight international competition. I uh, still, you know, make a living from fighting and on top of that, I get to, you know, start dipping my toes into, you know, a little bit of broadcasting work, being a bit of an ambassador for that company, uh, doing things like that. And um, really just being like one of the first first waves of fighters with that company. So, you know, I get a little bit of getting to make history, a little bit of getting to, you know, pave the, pave the road for, you know, life after fighting. And uh, at the same time, like for the current, I, <laughs> I get to still fight and do what I love to do and, and train and, you know, really get a chance to start over. So uh, all that played a big, big part in it. Yeah. They, uh, cause they're, they're based out of France, right. And they have both African and European wings, which I think is kind of neat because there's no other organization that really you've got organizations in Africa and smaller organizations in Europe, but nothing that's kind of like United things which is why I, I really like the organization. I thought they had a, a really, really good first first card. Um, are you looking to get on that? Because uh, they're back in Belgium, I think, in October. Is that uh, when you're looking to return? or? Well, uh, I had actually agreed to fight August in, uh, August in South Africa. And uh, with all the corona stuff that's yeah. going around, um, my fight got postponed indefinitely. So I'm looking to be on their first card back you know I wanted to fight three times this year minimum so um ideally I want to fight four times a year but the this year I know for a fact that's not going to happen so whenever they're up and running again you know I want to be on that that first that first event um if not 
on the event, I'd like at least like to, you know, be on, be a part of the broadcast team for it or just go to the event and introduce myself to, you know, all the workers for that company, all of the fans of that company and, um, you know, basically just really familiarize myself with the fan base, the organization and uh, everyone who helps make it operate. Uh, that, that's what I really look forward to. So, um if I could get on that card, great. If not, uh, I'll be all right. Um, but yeah, I just I just want to fight again soon. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I mean, what to, have you thought? Because you said you want to travel and you want to broadcast. Um, obviously, um, where you're training, they have a lot of affiliates, right? They have affiliates in Austria, uh, Italy. Have you looked at? Um, obviously, not right now with everything that's going on. But have you looked at? perhaps even training at those facilities? Uh, yeah, I've thought about it, and um, it's just it wouldn't be a, a good good fit for me, I don't think. The biggest thing what a lot of people don't realize is, you know, you can't just, like, lift up and transplant and, yeah. and go somewhere and make it be the right fit, you know? Um, and my gym's back home. Uh, it worked great for me because everyone adjusted kind of to my schedule. The downside was that um, – I was just a lot better than anyone I was training with and I wasn't really getting much better myself. And on top of that, um, I wasn't surrounded with, you know, full-time fighters, people that were really all in no plan B like it's either this is going to work or I'm going to fall flat on my face. Um, coming out to Jackson wink, you know, uh, well, back to being back home, it also worked really well because uh, personality-wise, I did great with my striking coach, my jiu-jitsu coach, my, all my MMA coaches back home. I, I got along very well with. Um, so it was more than just a, a coach-student relationship, you know? And uh, that's very important to me. And then I, I came here to Jackson Wink, and I was a little nervous because I didn't – um, I didn't know if I would still have that, uh, if I would still connect with the coaches. And I, I have connected with the coaches out here. I've connected with my teammates out here. And I've really made this uh, a home for me. And it's great because I've kept, got that home feeling, but there's none of the home distractions here. Yeah. So moving to a new country, um, if I were to go to one of those places, I feel like it would it would lead to – not necessarily a whole lot of distractions, but I, I don't know if it would be a good fit for me because I don't think I would be able to truly um, focus this into the right word. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm immerse myself yeah. completely in the training like I have here. Yeah, and they also lack, you know, Greg Jackson isn't in Italy. Uh, John Jones isn't in Italy. Um, so obviously the masterminds behind that camp aren't over there. Um, yeah. what's, it, what's it like training obviously under Greg Jackson, who's, you know, arguably the best, the best coach in all of MMA. Um, how, how is that? And how has that changed your, uh, your fighting style and your game plan and, and, and just, just your mental outlook going into fights? You know, it's, uh, it's changed immensely, honestly, uh, training with Greg, because it's, it's a lot more than just the physical stuff. Uh, we do a lot of, you know, macro planning and then we get into the, the fine details um, and I think he's got the perfect balance of the two. Some guys are just too too broad with it and allow you to freestyle a little too much. And, and some people micromanage your game plan way too much. Uh, and the combination between Greg Jackson and Mike Winklejohn is, is great because when I'm with Coach Wink, you know, I know it's always going to be, you know, a barn burner of a workout. Uh, we're going to work hard. I'm going to get tired and I'm going to be – repping good techniques every time because we're not going to move on to the next thing until I get that that one thing right um and that's cool and then with Greg uh you know he's got a great blend of you know the technique and uh the physical training aspect of it as well you know we uh will run mountains sometimes we'll sometimes we're doing just grappling work and things like that uh, with with Coach Wink, I don't even ever have to run afterwards. I'm so dead after holding pads. <laughs> after he holds pads for me, I, was, I don't want to do anything for the rest of the day. So, um, but so the, that outlook, and uh, for the first time uh, when I went into this fight, I felt like I really belonged there. I felt like there was, you know, there was I wasn't stressed at all because there was nothing more I could have done. I knew I had done everything right going into that fight. Um, you know, 
sometimes you can do everything right and it still yeah. won't work out though. And uh, you know, that's just part of life. But I came right back. We got right back to work. Uh, everyone was happy I came back and happy to keep training. So, you know, it's, it's the perfect fit. There wasn't any bitterness or animosity after a loss. Yeah, I, I feel like I watched, I mean, I've watched uh, all four of your, your fights in the UFC. And I thought the first one, you know, uh, it was, you, you've got to fight. Your fight, um, obviously, Bueller, I think that's how you pronounce his name, is an incredible fighter. He's fighting for the 1FC heavyweight title. So there's no, there's no, I guess, shame in that, in that, that loss. I found, found with the other two, it's like you never really even had a chance to get going. Um, obviously, uh, they were both really early. Um, what, what are you planning on doing? I guess in an upcoming fight, are you planning on maybe starting early or holding back, or, or what's your, what's your game plan? What are you, what are you thinking about doing, and what changes can you implement um, going forward to kind of avoid that? Uh, you know, I think um, I, I kind of changed the way I fought to a more um, be more striking centric and, and and try and use striking to set up my wrestling a lot more but I never pulled the trigger on my wrestling and then when I did I was rushing it and things like that um I think I just I'm getting back to just more pressure you know just moving forward a lot more not not being uh afraid to lose or not you know because the way I see it, you know, the worst things that, are, that can possibly happen to you in a fight have already happened to me. So um, that that fear is gone. And, uh, you know, I just want to get back to doing what I do well, you know, and that's, that's moving forward, pushing the pace, uh, you know, hitting, throwing a lot of punches and getting a lot of takedowns, using that wrestling, making people feel my weight, feel that pressure, um, and just, you know, putting it on guys. Yeah. So you were you were a D one D one wrestler, right? Yes. Yeah. And you played some some college football. No, no, no. I had a so I went to a, a small Division one school. Yeah. Uh, to wrestle, and then that spring they had asked me to try out for the football team, and I was going to be like third string. Uh, and at the time, I think that that team had won maybe two games in three years, so. I couldn't rationalize myself being a you know, you know top three, top four in the conference for wrestling, and then going and not even seeing the field on the team that isn't close to being at the top. So uh, that's that's where my football stuff ended. I got injured my senior year in high school playing football, and um, so that's what it actually led to me going to wrestle Division One instead of trying to play football at that level. And then uh, I had an NFL tryout after my last year of college. With my uh, with my Packers, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, the, the trial was set up to be with the Colts, and the Packers came down to the facility I was training at and evaluated me. Um, but, uh, you know, I just wasn't there. I really just don't like football all that much. I love working out. I just don't like football. I don't know what it is. Uh, you know, we got down, we were running the 40s and, like, they give you two chances to run a 40 and like one of them I fell and the other one I ran like a, a f- five second 40 and like all my, all my agility stuff was great. You know, I had great agility times and all that. And they love watching me work out and explode and do my lifts and stuff like that. I just, when it got to doing football stuff, I just didn't like it and I wasn't very good at it. So I switched, uh, and that's that's right after that is when I started training for MMA, and you know everything just kind of took off for me. What was uh, what was that transition like from wrestling to MMA? Obviously, you see a lot of uh, wrestlers, DC, Ben Askren, guys like that, high level college wrestlers, make that transition. What was uh, how was it like? Was it uh, was it weird? You know, seeing seeing punches and stuff like that, and I guess how did that uh, how how did that transition go? Uh, it went pretty well for me. Uh, the hardest thing was getting used to the kicks, honestly, uh, kicks and 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 the knees, and then you know there's so many nuances to every sport that you do. Uh, every every aspect of combat sports has so many different nuances to it. So learning the different nuances of striking is really different you know there's so many different ranges to play with there's different angles things can come from 
different strategies based off of someone's stance and, and, and things like that. And I, I'm still learning that. So I, I wouldn't even say that I'm fully used to it yet. I'm just better at it than a lot of people. Yeah, I mean, you're still pretty young in the game, only, what, eight eight fights? So there's still a lot of time there to, de- to develop. One of my favorite pictures, I think, ever in, uh, is, is a picture of you sitting next to Tyron Woodley. Uh, you make him <laughs> look like Demetrius Johnson. Um, what? Uh, how, how is it like cutting to... Is there's not many guys that have to cut to make 265. Um, what's what's it like having to cut cut that? Obviously, it's probably a lot harder to do cardio when you're carrying around a 280 pound body than someone who's 170. Uh, have you thought of like even taking like a super heavyweight fight, or is it just uh, you know that 20 that last 20 pounds isn't too 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 difficult? Uh, you know, it's really not that hard for me. It's all about. Um... The last 15 to 17 pounds of any weight cut I do, it's uh, we handle it with a water cut. Um, and, you know, we're pretty scientific about my water cut. Uh, I've barely even had to get in the sauna my last three or four fights. So it's not that bad. Um, and, you know, now I would take a super heavyweight fight if offered. Um, you know, it's, it's all about payment, honestly, at this point. So if I'm going to take a super heavyweight fight, it's, it's, I'm not going to take a fight for you know, two or three thousand dollars. You know, I just, I'm not going to do that. Uh, the biggest reason I didn't take any super heavyweight fights as an amateur or early in my pro career is because uh, the goal was to get to the UFC, and the UFC doesn't have a super heavyweight division. Now that I've already been in the UFC, I, and that um, if I, if it were to present itself again, yeah, I probably would go back, but, um, I'm, I'm just about growth as a fighter right now, and I have to look at things that are going to allow me to, you know, get the best fights for me and get the best fights to really grow as a martial artist. You know, most guys do that in their amateur career or in their early pro career on the regional scene, and I never really got that chance. So I'm trying to do it as best I can on the fly, fighting internationally now. So it, it's different. Um but that that's the short version, I guess, of why I never took heavyweight, super heavyweight fights. And lastly, there's a there's a couple a uh, couple of things in the news. One is literally minutes old. Uh, Gaethje versus Ferguson. Um, how do you feel about that? And how do you think it uh, how do you think it plays out? I'm actually more excited for this than I think I would be for Khabib and Ferguson. Just because yeah. I think their um, styles I'm- are. Their styles are very different. Um, I'm actually very excited because Gaethje has good wrestling. He just doesn't use it when he fights. And his striking is that dude hits hard, man. He hits hard. Uh, he can take a hit. Tony is in a, I wouldn't call Tony much of a power puncher, but he can he can just go for days. He can hit you from all different kinds of angles. He's always inflicting damage. And uh, Gagey, but Gagey's, you know, he lands one kick, you're going to feel it. He lands one punch, you're going to feel it. He's always got that just lights out power. Um, and he can very easily, I don't say, I wouldn't say easily, but he can very readily negate uh, Tony's grappling advantages. So I think this is going to be a really good fight, and I'm actually leaning towards Gaethje in this one. Hmm. Yeah, I, I, I have Gaethje too. I think if Gaethje was more prepared, he'd have a better chance. I think on short notice, I have no idea. Um, but I, I do like Gaethje as well. Uh, also in the news, your your teammate, um, John, um, I guess from someone who trains with him every day, how do you see him mentally? Um, obviously, we see it as fans, and obviously we're disappointed and upset. Um, very, very good outcome, I guess. But as a, as a teammate and as a friend, how, like, what, what are your thoughts on everything that transpired? You know, as a teammate and a friend uh, of John's, I I don't really see that big of a problem with it. So all all my issues with with what he well what happened to him or or how that went down are, you know, we're told to stay in, we're told to stay home. Um, you know, you we're not supposed to be going out and stuff like that. Just from the simple quarantine perspective, and. Um, you know, to, so for him to go out and, and do that is kind of a slap in the face to everyone that is forced to stick, you know, stick at home and, and not do that. And then on top of that, you know, the drinking and driving. Um, 
I don't know too much of John's history, but that's, uh, you know, that's his choice. And and my thing, my philosophy on, on life and things like that are simply, you know, you can do whatever you want as long as you're not endangering other people and you're not hurting any other people. And as long as you're willing to accept all the repercussions of what you do, go for it. So it, you're a grown man. He's a grown man. He's a grown individual. He can do whatever he wants to do, you know. What I look at it from that perspective is nobody got hurt. He didn't get hurt. You know, he might be a little bit embarrassed, but we all have stuff like that. You know, yeah. everybody's got stuff that they do. Everyone makes mistakes. I don't think of him as any worse of a person for that. Is it's just something that I personally would have done? No. But, you know, just that's John. That's part of who he is. You know, he's just going to do stuff like that. Um, you know, let him be. You know, nobody got hurt. He apologized. He's doing better. You know, he's chilling at home now, shooting his bows and arrows and all that. So, you know, that's that's just John. Um, but, uh, you know, you know that's, that's all I really know about it. It's the way I see it also, you know, it's his business. If he wanted to talk to me about it, he would. He hasn't. He hasn't reached out to me. He hasn't texted me, none of that. So, as on him, uh, you know, live your life, bro. Do what, do what you gotta do, and that, that's just that's just my output on it. I'm very, I as me as a grown man, I don't, I try not to concern myself too much about what other, yeah, grown ups are doing. You know, everyone, just live your life. Uh, if you want to have an interaction, we'll have an interaction. If not, that's cool too. You know. <laughs> yeah, um, and uh, I guess someone else who you've had. Uh... There's been, I guess, in the past, had some uh, had a rough upbringing. Is someone you had a lot of beef with, and one of your your former opponents. That's actually what really uh, why I ended up liking you so much was you're one of the few people calling for that fight uh, against Greg Hardy. Um, obviously, he's got a big fight coming up. What what's the one thing that the one takeaway I guess from that fight? Um, does he hit hard? Like I guess is one of the a lot of people no. are like oh he's not a he, he's he's a football player. He's not a fighter. It, obviously, uh, I thought that it was stopped a little bit prematurely, and I think you you, you do too. Um, is that is that a fight you'd want back if if it was ever presented to you? Yeah, if it was presented, I, I'd like to do that again. Um, you know, it, it didn't hit hard. I wasn't hurt at any point. I I popped right up. You know, the reason I stayed in that position so long is because I felt I wasn't taking any yeah. damage. But you know, I had a chain of events in my head that. Uh, a chain of moves I was going to follow if certain things happen, but the fight will stop before those things could happen. Uh, that's all I can really say about it. I mean, I, I can't really critique the guy too much anymore. You know, he beat me. You know, I lost that fight. Uh, no matter what anyone thinks, I, I can't change the outcome of that. Uh, what I did learn from that is, you know, I was a little too emotionally invested going into that fight. Um, you know, and that, that kind of changed the way that, uh, that I go about and I approach fights in general now is because I, um, you know, I'm, I'm still learning. I'm still learning what does and doesn't work for me. Yeah. Some guys need that emotional energy. They need that emotional burnout to, to fight. Well, uh, I'm not one of them. Uh, I, I need to go in there. I need to be focused. Yes, but not overly intent on one thing. Um, so I, I don't think I was loose enough going into that. I didn't, I wasn't fighting like myself and that's okay. You know, at, at the end of the day, this is a sport. Uh, it's a competition. There's going to be a winner. There's going to be a loser every time. Uh, and I can't just throw a hissy fit every time I lose. Yeah. You're in a, you're in probably one of the best camps for that. You've got two great masterminds uh, as coaches, uh, arguably one of the, the smartest fighters of all time as well uh there so i'm glad that you're uh, you're in a good place in terms of where you're you are mentally as well as where you are physically if it sounds like you've you've found a good home there in uh in uh, in albuquerque um thanks again for for taking the time uh, appreciate it and uh, i'm looking forward to to your next fight and uh hopefully it's sooner rather than later yeah thanks man uh yeah i definitely agree it should be sooner rather than later i hope so as well um but yeah no problem thanks for everything all right man have a good one and all the best you too man bye